Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Jesus, be present here present in our speaking and in our listening, in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. On a beautiful summer day like this one, I was out swimming laps in the pool, making pretty good time, enjoying the feeling of moving, through the water, the strength of my arms and my legs. And I took a break, and the coach of the local swim team, seen my laps, came and crouched at the end of my lane and explained to me that I was wasting energy sending my arms out too far to the sides said, keep your stroke close so your elbow is the first thing to come out and set you up for the next stroke. And I said, thank you. And I got ready for another couple of laps, and I thought a lot about my elbows. I thought so much about my elbows that I stopped proceeding forward and made a good pace towards the bottom of the pool. <laughs> when we learn something new, there is an awkward phase, a time when it doesn't fit, and doesn't flow. It's not part of our bodies yet. This is where we meet Jesus today. We're in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 9, and a change has just happened for Jesus. Two very important things have happened. The first is that he went up the mountain with Peter and James and John, who saw his face shining and the Holy Spirit claiming him as the child of God who should be listened to. This glorious moment of knowing that he was in the right place, doing the right thing. The other is that he has become deeply aware of where this road will lead and started speaking to his disciples for the first time about his coming death. 
and the disciples don't get it. They don't understand, and they're afraid. So next chapter, chapter 10, things are going to start going really well for Jesus again. He's going to start moving with strength, with a sense of flow. Next week for our gospel, we'll have the calling of the 70. Jesus will gather 70 people and will tell them in beautiful poetic language what it means to be unattached, to let go for the gospel, and to go out and proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. This is that fantastic passage about leaving behind your extra tunic, not taking any money for the road, trusting that God will be with you, going into a town and offering your peace. And if it's not accepted, taking the peace back and shaking the dust from your feet. And the 70 go out and they have a fantastic time. People hear the good news and their lives are changed and they come back rejoicing at the work they've been given to do. Now, if we went straight from Jesus in the glorious light of the Holy Spirit to those joyous 70 disciples, we would have a very different gospel. Things would seem a lot easier. But I think that there's a reason that we're given this stretch of chapter 9 where things don't go so well. The disciples are confused and afraid, so they behave like people who are confused and afraid. They jockey for position, arguing about who's going to be first in this new kingdom. They get very concerned about who's in the group and who is out of the group. Just before our passage for today, they tell a man that he can't cast out Jesus, he can't cast out demons in Jesus' name because he's not in the club. And you have to be part of our group if you're going to go about casting demons. And at the beginning of our gospel for today, when they have to move on from a Samaritan village, they take it to extremes and say, oh, well, if they don't accept you, teacher, is this the part where we get to rain down the fire? <laughs> Jesus says, no. Guys, that is not what we are about. The disciples are having some trouble. I have to say, this isn't the finest point for Jesus' recruitment tactics either. He's developed this vision of the disciples as the chosen family. He's sent his mother and brothers away and said, those who believe in the gospel, this is my family, and we're going to do this together. But when people try to join the family, he describes what they're doing in very stark terms. Someone wants to follow him. He says, I'll go wherever you go. And Jesus says, well, to tell you, I don't know where we're going. We will never know, because the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. It's pretty scary. And then he invites two others to follow him. And... Yes, they negotiate a little bit, but they're not asking for anything extreme. 
saying goodbye before you leave or remembering to bury your father while you're still in town. Um, like just basic decency and care for one's family. And Jesus says, no, you don't get it. That's not what we're about. If I go to our activities fair for the new students at MIT at the end of August and tell them all how they're going to have to abandon their families and their friends um, if they want to be part of us, I don't think I will have any new freshmen in our ministry. And the Office of Religious Life may have a conversation with me about behaving like a cult. <laughs> this is a hard moment for Jesus and for us who follow him. And I take from it two lessons. The first is that Struggling to learn something new, to really catch a vision and share it with others in a way that makes sense and gets people excited and moves us all forward. That's hard for everyone. It's so much a part of being human that even our Lord and Savior experienced it as part of his humanity. So when God invites us to do something new, to stretch into a new place, and it doesn't feel right. When we're stuck in that awkward beginning place, we can know that Jesus has been there before and he will be with us now and help us find our way forward. I think Jesus knew he was in that hard place because he talked about plowing. He said, no one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. He knew what he was doing was not reaping the harvest or tending the growth or even planting the seed. He knew he was at the beginning, breaking the ground, doing the hard beginning work for himself and for his disciples, setting the blade of the plow and getting the ox or the donkey to go forward and focusing so hard, keeping focused straight forward so that the blade of the plow would break the hard earth and the road would be set deep and straight and true for the planting that would come. He knew that for his Jewish family, for people of the Roman world, for all of us still today, that the call of family and of duty, the need to serve the people that we love, and to meet the expectations that we know that the world holds for us. And all these things are hard to let go of. There's so much that's good that connects us to our communities and to our families. I think Jesus is telling us, yes, and. 
Yes, and be careful. Because caring for our own family and keeping them safe can also be an excellent excuse to avoid doing the thing that's hard and scary, but right. To hold what comfort and money and status and privilege we've managed to acquire close to ourselves and not share it because we're just trying to give what we can to our children and set them up for success. Jesus is asking us to hold to the plow, to let the earth be turned over, to let something new grow. He's saying to us, wherever you draw that line between the people who I'm responsible for and the people who I'm not, wherever that is, we're going to have to break it. And it's going to have to get bigger. Because I'm about to send you out to proclaim something new. So may we be ready to hear even the hard and the awkward parts of the gospel and to travel Jesus with Jesus on the road knowing that whatever we encounter, he's already been there, and he will be with us to the end. Thanks be to God. Amen.